from Austin, Texas, it's The Cube, covering Pure Storage Accelerate 2019, brought to you by Pure Storage. Welcome back to theCUBE, y'all, the leader in live tech coverage. I'm Lisa Martin with Dave Vellante. Couple of gents back on theCUBE. We have Vaughn Stewart, the VP of Technology for Pure. Vaughn, welcome back. Hey, it's great to be here. Thanks for being Accelerate. We're excited to be here. And we've got Kerry Stanton, VP of Global Biz Dev and Corporate Development from Veeam. Kerry, welcome back. Thank you very much. It's I'm great in to the be Veeam well. green. I love the love it. Planned, of course. Thank you very Big much. Big branding here. Hi. Uh, we, lots going on with Veeam and Pure. Yes. Let's, Kerry, let's go ahead and start with you. Talk to us about the nature of the Veeam Pure partnership. I'm assuming better together, but give us the breakdown. Sure, we've had a relationship for many years, but over the, the past three years, we've seen it, you know, this year, you know, counting this year, like the scale out is just unbelievable. We're growing at triple digits on our co-sell wins in the field. All of it's, right, all of it, predominantly being driven from the flash blade success that they, we've had in the marketplace, our customers, uh, are, are buying into the performance that they have. Our, uh, our relationship is growing through joint innovation and joint development. And so what we've seen is raising them to a global partner and having dedicated resources on it has only amplified our uh, success we have had. So yeah, it's fantastic. And then Vaughn, from your perspective, what are some of the things that you're hearing? Are you guys being brought in more from Veeam customers? Is Veeam being brought in more from PureSide? What's that mix like? Yeah, so we've had a, we've had a strong um, set of channel partners that are, I think, promoting our, our joint solution and our products kind of at top of their line card. Um, of course, there's always the customer request to, to get pulled in, and I think customers um, uh, who've experienced either one of our products look at their satisfaction, they look externally at like NPS scores, right, and say, hey, you know, if I'm a pure customer, there's a data protection co company that's got an NPS very similar to yours. Let, you know, tell us more about what you're doing with, with Veeam. Uh, if you look at kind of our, our, our common ethos, right, simplicity in the model, right, co-innovation help drive scale, whether it's been through joint API integration with the universal adapter, or trying to lean into next generation architectures like flash to flash to cloud, it's just been a very easy, progressive partnership to drive and bring in the market. Yeah. So talk more about that joint development. Um, there's a start in the field, you know, engineering resources, I'd love to have, have you add some color to that. I think, I, think, I think it's a combination of, so we'll start with the universal adapter. Yeah. That was uh, Veeam's initiative to help add scale to the backup process to Azure putting virtual machines into backup mode, allowing you to leverage these, the storage controller snapshot so that you can come in and out of that backup mode very quick, be, be invisible to production operations, offload a bunch of data processing and, and time out of the equation. That just helps scale, right? Backup more virtual machines faster. That's a program that they initiated, that we were one of the founding partners on, one of the first partners to publish uh, a universal adapter or, or our API for it. The yeah. results have been? The results are that Pure is by far the number one partner for downloads, for our customer downloads that we have across our partner ecosystem. So we have about 15 partner ecosystems that have written to the Universal API. Uh, and so just last week, you know, over 3,000 downloads, surpassed over 3,000 downloads. Pure has 6,500 customers, I'll let you do the math. All right, so it's, it's great that we see such strong adaption from their customer base. Almost 50% of their customers are Veeam customers, and then that continues. That's high. It's very high. Wow, so give me your favorite customer example that really articulates the value that Pure brings, the value that Veeam brings. Well, we've got a lot going on in the financial space, uh, in the healthcare space. Uh, Butler Health is a joint customer that we have, you know, a customer reference win that they've published and that we've published, um, and obviously many, many more, but especially in the, in the you know, people, customers in the financial and healthcare that are looking for performance and, and looking to that flash blade as a, as a, as a landing zone that's going to give them more than just a, a backup target, it's going to give them the ability to leverage it for AI and ML and many other factors, which is again, one of the reasons why we've seen such strong adoption. You talk yeah. about healthcare, we're talking about patient data, lives at stake. Give me some of the meat about what this customer, for example, is achieving at the business level and the human lives level. Well, 
I, I think what they're seeing is what they were using, it's not so much the exact stats that I can give you down to how many they're getting per second, but it's what they were using before, which is one of the legacy competitors that we have, which we call you know, some of these donors that they give to market share that we take away day in and day out. Donors. Without, without <laughs> saying names. Uh, but there was a, a rip and replace that we came in and taking a second generation solution from a legacy uh, hardware appliance that was being used pr previously in a secondary storage. Yeah, so allow me to, to elaborate a bit, right? So you asked about the technology, we kind of talked about the universal adapter for the offload. Where we've really seen growth has been in this notion of flash to flash to cloud, and, and, and Pure's introduced this notion of rapid restore. So again, how do we grow our businesses together, grow into more mission critical or patient critical deployments, has been this notion of not just backing up the data faster, that's kind of the the, the daily repetitive task that, that no organization wants to, to deal with. Where the rubber meets the road is, can you put the data back? Right. And, and we've seen this explosion in the increase of, of, of the capacity of data set sizes and the pressure they put on restoring that data when you happen to have a hardware failure or a data center go offline or a power issue. And this goes, so you go back to patient records got to be online, when everything fails, and, and, and there's an issue with HA or whatever it may be, how quickly can we get that data? And we're orders of magnitude faster than the legacy platforms. And so having an integrated appliance is part of that key and some co-engineering, is that right? I mean, you guys are pure software, no pun intended, right? You don't want to be... No, no, it's, it's, it's taking the, the, they wrote to our API, right? So the, the work that they did on the API and then continue to innovate and iterate against it, right? And coming out with the next version that they just came out with it is, is just, differentiating themselves in the marketplace. And that's really what we're seeing. And we're seeing that success at the enterprise today from what we have without even looking forward to our you know, upcoming V10, which is going to have some, you know, some high-end enterprise feature sets. And we want to get into that, but uh, something that Vaughn that you were just saying, it's, it's almost as if data protection is no longer just an insurance policy, it's an asset. You have to be able to get it back. Uh, absolutely, if you, uh, we believe if you look at the legacy backup appliances, they were designed and optimized for short backup windows and are proving to be a challenge at restoring your data, which is actually where the value in the architecture is. Um, we've talked about rapid restore and, and bringing flash in that space. We worked with Veeam Engineering on V10 to actually double that performance so that customers as they upgrade their code line can again bring those mission critical workloads back online even faster than in the past. Uh, in addition to that, we've worked through some of the Veeam integrations for customers who want to mine that data, who want to clone those workloads and bring them up and online and, and, and add more analytics or searching of the metadata of that data. So there's a lot going on besides just your backup and recovery. So you guys are saying, chuck the appliance, don't need the appliance, you've got a better model. Is that what I'm hearing or? We win against appliances day in and day out, so absolutely. Software, you know, best of breed software, best of breed uh, storage hardware. What should we expect for V10 adoption? Gary, you guys announced in the spring. Yes, right. and it will ship in Q4, Dave, honestly. Yeah. This is going to be, uh, Anton is going to ship. Yeah, <laughs> gonna, uh, you guys no. got a good track record yeah. there. Yeah, right? I know, I'm <laughs> going to go out there. Uh, no, but we have some key features that will differentiate us in the marketplace, especially as we go to the enterprise with pure storage, such as immutability, right? So that's a feature that we've talked about. Uh, you know, we've been hyping uh, because we believe in it, that what it's going to bring for the protection of ransomware, malware, and uh, it's, it's going to be a, a game changer, we believe, in the marketplace. And our famous NAS, we're finally going to support NAS support for their enterprise customer base. So, I mean, those two key features in and of itself. So again, I talk about the scale that we're having today in the marketplace without these key enterprise features and then having those chip you know, in the next 90 days are, again, we believe just going to continue to elevate our business. We were talking to Charlie earlier today about just, as part of his job, is TAM expansion and, and data protection is an obvious area for that. You could have chosen to go buy a small software company. You certainly have the cash on your balance sheet and, and compete, but you've chosen to partner. Talk about the opportunity that you guys jointly see in terms of the market you can penetrate. Uh, I, I think it is such a, 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 that our ecosystem is so comprised today of partnerships that are based on, on one hand you're partnering and on the other hand you're competing, that it is, it is really refreshing to find a partnership like Veeam where we've got very clear lines of what our product offerings are, where they come together, and no competitive obstacles. It makes partnering in the field the easiest, right? We've got great partnerships across the board. Some are appliance vendors, 
Sometimes those partnerships work fast, sometimes they run into hurdles. We never run into a hurdle together. So it's worked very well. I think our, our partners, uh, our channel partners, have preferences around the server side that they like to go to market with. We give them the freedom together to, to pick and choose. So they're putting in best in class software with best in class storage to, to meet the needs. They put the rest together based on what fits their business model or their, their current agreements, and they go forward. So clear, clear swim lanes, big market. I think you guys showed some data at Vmon. I want to say Danny's data maybe $15 billion, Tam, maybe yeah. even somewhat larger. You guys get a piece of that, you get a piece of that. Yeah, and as, as Vaughn said, it's just, well, there's, no, there's no friction in the marketplace. So it's going out and doing the work we need to do to win, but we never get it that, oh, we can't introduce this because it's going to compete with, even if it's only 2% of what they have, there's, just, there's literally no, they do not have data protection and we don't do, as you know, we don't do hardware and storage. So again, and best of breeds. And I think those numbers may be even conservative because you know, as you were pointing out, the, the, the traditional backup products were designed to deal with the biggest problem, which was backup window. Yep. Which, by the way, 60% of the times the backup didn't work anyway. You know, but you had to get inside of a window. Yeah, we backed it up, check. <laughs> and then, it, it, but backup is one thing, as my friend Fred Moore said, recovery is everything. So, things are shifting, and in a digital business, recovery, you know, is, is tantamount. Yeah. You don't ever, you can't ever not be without your data. Yeah. So, it's an imperative. Yeah, it's um, when Pure and the, the Flashblade business unit first came up with the construct of a rapid restore, I mean, admittedly, I was sitting in the corner and just saying, there's no way. There's no way that a customer would look to pay a premium for Flash for their backup, and then you meet the customers. And it's just one after the other. And there's these stories around, we had to stop production, we couldn't get an ERP back online, right? We, we couldn't take transactions because the, the, the processing database or the purchasing database was offline. And you're just sitting there going, these are real world right. Right, uh, issues that impact revenue for organizations. And so we are going through an evolution about rethinking around data protection and what it means in, to, in today's day and age. And security is such top of mind, Kerry, today, to, on the CIO's mind. And data protection is part of that. Backup is a key part of that. Uh, you think about ransomware, right? You guys got solutions there. I mean, yes. it all fits together, right? It's not these sort of bespoke you know, ideas anymore. It's really one big mosaic so that people can drive their digital transformations. I mean, that's really what they care about. I, I think the, the, you know, Veeam's old slogan, it just works, right? It continues to, to evolve in that, right? You talked about the, the, the backup not working in its first place, right? So we have our core fundamental foundations that Veeam has, right? Is that it will, the trust that the customer will know that it will be online. We have the shortest RPO, RTOs, right, in, in the marketplace. And then you take that and these enterprise class features, again, that's why marrying it with peers route to market and their go to market strategy is, is having the success we're having in the marketplace. So you're hearing a lot from customers, flash to flash to cloud, this is, there is a very strong need for this. Some of the things that were announced today, in terms of some more firsts that yep. Pure is delivering to the market, what are some of the things that you guys are hearing? Maybe, Carrie, we'll start with you from Veeam's partnership perspective, like the Flash RAC, for example, or starting to be able to deliver, I saw Black's mouth, uh, <laughs> to be able to bring the cost down so that customers can look at putting a spectrum of workloads, even backups, on Flash. What is Veeam's reaction well, smiles, which uh -huh. I tend to do, Lisa. But I mean, to be honest with you, we sit back and love everything that Pure is doing from innovation. And so if they are going to come out with a broader set of target solutions for secondary storage, then we are going to be their partner there as we are with Flashblade. So we're sitting back and loving the innovation that they're bringing to the marketplace and to their customers. And I saw that Cheshire Cat grin, Vaughn. Yeah, so, so for the audience who maybe missed, we had a number of product announcements uh, this morning, uh, taking the flash array from a single product line into a portfolio, going to that tier zero workload with the direct memory cache acceleration powered by Intel's Optane uh, products. As we go into a tier two economics space, but still keeping all the tier one features and availability, we announced flash array C, which is leveraging QLC as a storage medium. Uh, while we have a design to uh, expand our TAM and to find new workloads. Uh, we have not looked at backup for the flash rate C at this point. The flash to flash to cloud powered by the data hub and the rapid restore is, is going strong, so you want to kind of keep the team focused on that. And we've got other markets that we've yet to penetrate that have been more price sensitive 
where we think the flash array C is a better alignment. Now, again, maybe over time I'll be found wrong and, and we'll change our tune, but you know, I'll give you an example, I'll go back to ransomware. Ransomware is a top three question in terms of any storage conversation when you deal with a financial institution today. To the point where not only are, you, are they asking about what are you doing in your product, what are you doing across your partner ecosystem, some of the modern proof of concepts require you to go through a ransomware recovery procedure because you know, these financial institutions, they're worried about getting not just locked out, but locked out you know, on their HA site because you just replicated the ransomware over. So this, this ability to have immutable, uh, an immutable image to be able to bring it back online fast, to rapid resort somewhere, it's, you can see where these technologies start to line up in a, in a comprehensive solution for the customers. And so Flash Array C is great. It has nowhere the bandwidth of Flash Blade. So we're going to try to keep those as separate products in different markets at the time, at, at least for the time being. Got it, thanks for clarifying. Yeah. And cloud, I got to ask the cloud question. I mean, it's interesting. You guys have both embraced cloud. It's, you're seeing it, in the old days, I was saying to, I think I was saying to Charlie again, you know, the executives would be like, no, don't do that, it's going to kill us. But now it's like, hey, it's not a zero sum game, the trend is your friend, you got to embrace it. How are you making cloud, each of you, a, 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 a tailwind versus the, you know, what all the analysts expect? Uh, it's a headwind, oh, it's going to zero sum game, it's going to steal from A to B. Well, I mean, Dave, you can imagine from my vantage point, it's easy to say that we're looking at cloud as just a, you know, expanding the TAM, expanding the ecosystem, the features we have today or at the archive tier, the success we're having with both Microsoft Azure and AWS are phenomenal, growing 40% month over month, right, the adoption. Uh, but all the new innovations that Danny and Anton and have talked on this show uh, that we're coming out with in V10 are only going to amplify that. Um, but it all starts back with you know, our partnerships today that we have on private clouds and that as customers are looking to evolve to the cloud, so we work with our partners like Pure to ensure that we're working with them today and as customers want to embrace the cloud they can, but predominantly those primary workloads are still remaining on-prem and they're looking on how they're going to support the cloud and we're doing that today and we'll be doing that more as we go forward. And the, the block storage announcement you guys made today was quite interesting. You yeah, guys so are we, we announced spinning up EC2s and S3s and ended up like, what? Yeah, <laughs> so, so this morning we announced general availability for Pure's cloud block store on AWS and, we, and plans as, as we are currently in beta and development for other clouds. Uh, but the folks today is, is AWS. And, and when you pair Cloud Block Store, which is basically the software of a flash array, architected for the hardware inside of AWS, so that you have the same functionality and service that you have on-prem, and you pair that with Pure as a Service, which is our OpEx model, right? It could pay as you consume, and the flexibility of sign a 12-month contract, you want 90% on-prem today and 10% in the cloud, two months from now you want it 50-50, like use the utility model to consume wherever you want, so that you can meet the requirements of your infrastructure, whether it's on-prem, in the cloud, or some hybrid combination. But, but the interesting thing to me was you're doing a lot of the heavy lifting for the customers with regard to the architecture, the, what, what you architect in the cloud, and I wonder, is there an opportunity to do something like that with, with backup, or is that just you know, not economical, deep, deep archive, things like that? I mean, I, I'm pretty sure we're told not to make any news right now, because <laughs> we've had a payload this morning. Stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. I've already said too much, so I'm probably here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's a good thing we weren't live. You're both no. in big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> wow, guys, so the first 10 years of pure, tremendous amount of innovation, as Charlie said, an overnight success in 10 years. So much more coming down. We've already heard about a tremendous amount of, of innovation and evolution today, so we can't wait to have you guys back on at the next event and here, you know, get our neck braces on for the whiplash of news that's going to be coming at us. Well, Thanks, looking guys. Looking forward to it. All right, we are Thanks too. Guys. Thanks, Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Lisa. Yeah, thank you. For Dave Vellante, I'm Pats. Lisa Martin. Go Pats! Yes. You're watching <laughs> Sorry. Q. Sorry. And Bruins. <laughs> and Bruins. Yeah, Carrie and I, we're crazy let's sports just, fans. Let's just be very PC. <laughs> Go everybody. Everybody gets participation <laughs> trophies. Just kidding. Anyway, you're watching theCUBE. Lisa Martin for Dave Vellante. Thanks for watching. <laughs>